Hello, this is Marie White. Thank you so much for joining me. So I want to let you know that you are victorious. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And so I'm just going to share some things that will be beneficial to you walking in sexual purity. First of all, know that the day you became born again, the day you said, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 that you are a new creature in Christ. You're brand new. It's just like a new baby learning all over again the things to do. So now you have a new slate. Your, your slate has been wiped clean. God just sees you as brand new. So what happens now is with that newness comes a new nature. So that means now you have to program your mind to think differently. And there are certain things you can do to avoid se sexual temptation. First thing you need to do is read God's word. Read the word of God. It's going to change the way you think. It's going to change the way you see life. It's going to change the way you see God. Because it will open up your eyes to so many things that you did not know before. So um, be open to learn and be open for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you and teach you. So when you read God's word, you just say, Lord, help me to understand what I'm reading. Show me how this applies to my life. And he'll make it practical. There are different versions of the Bible you can read, such as the NIV, New Living Translation. A great resource is BibleGateway.com that will give you different versions of the Bible so that when you read it, your enlightenment will be better where you're reading things that maybe didn't make sense before in the King James Version of the Bible, but now you can look at it in NIV, Amplified, just various um, translations, and it gives you more understanding. So with that in mind, know that because you are a new creature in Christ, the Bible tells us that we have to put to death, put to death, the old man put to death his ways, his deeds, his way of thinking. Um, the old person is dead. Colossians 3, verse 3, New Living Translation says, For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. That means you're no longer by yourself. You're not by yourself anymore. You're not just stumbling around through life trying to figure things out. You have the Holy Spirit who is your teacher, your guide. Um, according to John 16, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to, to comfort us, to, I mean, to lead and guide us into all truth. So we have him there to help us. So the Bible also tells us, Matthew 19, verse 5, the NIV translation of the Bible. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So what that tells us is that sex was meant to be between a man and a woman, husband and wife. And it should be an expression of love between the two of them. So you don't have to try to practice sex before marriage in order to satisfy your partner. The love, the, the attraction that you have for each other will help you. Now, another thing that can help is sometimes based on people's past experiences, maybe bondages, um, being uh, raped, molested, um, just bad sexual experiences they had in the past, um, just different sexual activity. Um, they have certain bondages. Well, the way you can overcome that is by just prayer. You can ask God to set you free, set you free from the past um, sexual relationships you had, set, set you free. And I'm going to um, get into that later on in the videos. So again, as I talked about marriage, marriage is the place where God says we should have sex between husband and wife. Um, it's an expression of love between husband and wife, physical intimacy. Now, People sometimes think they have to look at pornography, read magazines, um, do all these different, learn all these different tricks, 
um, one young lady one time, I remember um, when I was a single woman, I've been married now for three years, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> so I understand it is a wait. I mean, you wait and you trust God for what he says and he will deliver. And I can attest to the fact that um, the whole courtship that I was in with my husband, we never had sex. We didn't do a lot of heavy petting and all of that. Uh, we kept ourselves because we understood that the attraction that we felt for each other was so strong that we have to keep it under control. He respected that and I respected that. So that's key. When you're dating, you have to have someone with you in a relationship that's going to um, respect that. They have the same values, the same morals. If you're dating someone and that person is pressuring you to have sex um, before marriage, they're not, they don't love you. They don't love you at all. They're just trying to take from you. So bear in mind that if they'll have sex with you before they marry you, they're not going to be faithful to you after the wedding. So being married doesn't automatically change people. So be aware that if that person is pressuring you to have sex with them before they marry you, that's not the right person for you. They're not going to be faithful to you and they're going to be um, a stumbling block. They're going to block you from the things that God has for you with a lot of problems and issues. That's not the right person. People always think that, as I said earlier, you have to try it out. You have to try it out. And it's a lie. It's a lie. Um, remember, when you're born again, we are led by the Spirit of God. That means the Holy Spirit will let you know who to marry. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you on who to marry. The Word of God tells us that He leads us and guides us into all truth. So He'll tell you, um, be open to this person. That's the person you should marry. Don't be open to this one. He lets you know. He lets, he, he gives you the desires of your heart. He's not going to have you marry somebody where there's no attraction. God is not like that. Mm -mm. God is not like that. Remember, sex was created by God. So put your mind at ease. Put your mind at ease that if you put to death your flesh, if you say, I'm not going to have sex till I get married. If you say, I'm not going to look at movies that are going to stir, stir up my flesh and make me imagine having sex and listening to music and um, things that's going to stir, you know, sexual desire, that it there will be a payoff. There will be a payoff later on down the line. When God joins you to the person that is for you, you won't, you're, you, you won't be uh, conflicted. You won't feel dirty when you're in the marital bed. And that comes from having sex before marriage, feeling unclean, not being able to enjoy the sexual activity with your spouse because of all those other spirits that are still attached to you from your past. Um, sex is not dirty. There's nothing dirty about sex. It's pleasurable between husband and wife when God is in it. Um, and again, I would encourage, like if you have been in bondage before because of your past, maybe um, being with a lot of different people, having sex, a lot of different partners, God can set you free through prayer. He can deliver you and he can set you free. So on to the next point, um, the dangers of premarital sex. The dangers of remarital sex are that it does affect your decisions. It affects your decisions for your life because you're not thinking clearly anymore. Your mind is not clear enough to discern the right person for you. Even in your own personal life, certain decisions that you make, you don't make them with a clear mind for God to work through. And it affects, it could affect your financial prosperity. It can affect your um, physical health such as um, like for instance sexually transmitted diseases unwanted pregnancies um, just fatal attractions um, also soul ties um, soul ties is soul ties is very real 
A soul tie is when you have sex outside of marriage and an unclean spirit comes in. Now, the Bible talks about um, in Genesis 34, verse 1 to 3, that Shechem um, raped Dinah and, and his soul clothed to Dinah, that is what it says. That means he desired to be with her. He wanted her to be his wife. But the desire came from having sex with her by rape, forcing her to have sex with him. And it says that his soul clove, or that's in the King James Version, his soul clove to Dinah. Now, the wonderful thing about it is, again, if you've been raped, if you've been molested, the Lord can set you free. The Bible says in John 8, reading from about verse 32 on, that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So that's demonstrated all over the Bible. When Jesus prayed for the sick, he delivered people from demons. Um, in the Bible also, there's a scripture where it talks about Mary Magdalene in Mark 16, verse 9, how Jesus cast um, seven spirits out of Mary Magdalene, seven devils. So he'll make you free. You can be free in the name of Jesus, regardless of how you got to that point, regardless of how many soul ties you've had, whether you slept, slept with a thousand people. I mean, there was a man one time I can recall, he was um, in the um, homosexual lifestyle and he had slept, uh, had sex with a thousand men. And um, he said, the Lord set him free. I wish I had, could remember his name at this time, but I still remember his face. He said, the Lord set him free. And because the Lord set him free, he was able to go on to get married and marry a lady and have a family. And um, you don't have to be stuck in your past. You're not a victim of your past. Um, we've all been tempted. We've all have. And so the wonderful thing about God is he says in his word that if the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. And there's a wonderful scripture in Proverbs 28 verse 13 that tells us that whosoever confesseth and forsaketh his sin shall have mercy. So we're not bound by our past and we don't have to be condemned. And that's the wonderful thing about Christ. In Romans 8 also, it tells us that there is there for no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. What does that mean? You know, like before you got saved, if you just continue to be a sinner, just an unbeliever, just living according to how you feel and not acknowledging God, then there's a consequence for that. Eventually you die, your spirit goes to hell. But when you are born again, then what happens is not only do you become a new creature in Christ, but you, all of your sins are forgiven. Your conscience is, is free and clean towards God. Um, you don't have to be condemned anymore feeling like you're not worth it and, you know, God can't love me and look at all the things I've done. I mean, you don't have to live in condemnation because the Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, because the spirit of God um, in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Now, some people will say, well, I hear what you're saying, but I have these thoughts that keep coming into mind. How do I how do I deal with that? Very simple. The Bible tells us to cast down imaginations. Cast them down. What does that look like? A thought comes to your mind that's from your past or a temptation tempting you to sin sexually or any other way. It, the, the rule is the same. You say, in the name of Jesus, I cast that thought down. 
I take authority over that thought and I cast it down. Because the thoughts are coming from the devil. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the earth, of the um, world. He is the prince of darkness. That's what he's called. Um, Ephesians 2 refers to him as the um, father, um, as the prince of the power of the air. So, I mean, if you look at all those different scriptures, it will convince you and let you know that anytime you're thinking those thoughts is not of God. Um, in Revelation 12, it also calls Satan the accuser of the brethren that accuses you before God day and night. So he's the one bringing the thoughts. So what you do is, again, just say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over these demonic thoughts that come to my mind and I cast them down in Jesus' name. And you speak out who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have been forgiven. I have been set free. I am loved by God. You speak out who you are and you can have the devil flee from you. That's how Jesus did it in the word of God. That's how he did it. When Satan came to tempt him, when he was weak, he said in the word of God, in I believe it was uh, the New Testament, talks about Jesus told the devil that it is written. It is written. He just kept saying, it is written. And he would quote the word of God against the devil. And the devil would flee from him. When he was tempted in the wilderness, that's what he did. And the devil had to flee from him. And that's how we live. It talks about um, that in Matthew chapter 4. He would confront the devil with, it is written, it is written. And every time the devil would accuse him, well, if you are the son of God, do this and if you are the son of God do that he would just quote the word and quote the word and the devil had to flee and that's how we overcome him because remember we have the power we have the power over him he doesn't have the power over us this body that you're walking in is just a shell for your spirit it's just a house the Bible tells us that we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And because of that, remember, remember, God sees you as so precious that he gave you everything you need to know in order to succeed. He gave you the word of God. He gave you the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and that strengthens you as well. Just through prayer, just asking him, Father God, in Jesus' name, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And this is in uh, Mark chapter 16. So we're equipped with all of those things in order to succeed. Another scripture of the Bible in Jude. Um, there's a small book called Jude in the Bible, and it reads uh, like this, that you can build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? That means when you are praying, it's a prayer language that God gives us. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you have the gift to speak in tongues or other languages that you did not learn. Um, the Bible refers to this in Acts chapter 2. How when the um, day of Pentecost has come, how the disciples were all on one accord. And it says that the Holy Spirit came down like fire. Oh, Jesus. That's what you need. You need the Holy Spirit and you need that fire. You can't fight. <laughs> you cannot fight the devil with just your flesh. You see, in the, in the word of God, it tells us in Matthew chapter 4, how Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit when he came up out of the water. Um, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then the voice of God came down on him and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And because of that, he was able to do miracles. He could hear God speak to him. He had power, and he promised us that he gave us power over all the power of the devil, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we have everything we need. 
everything. So we don't have to doubt that now that we belong to God, our life has to be unfulfilled, boring, you know, not satisfied. Instead of focusing on being married and having sex, focus on your purpose. Just focus on if the Lord led you to go to school, go to school, learn a skill. I know we're doing virtual, everything virtual now um, because of COVID-19. Well, do that. I mean, whatever he leads you to do. If he leads you to go into the ministry, that's all well and good. I mean, anything that the Lord leads you to do to better your life, do that. Do that. Focus on those things. And as you focus on those things, you already gave your desire for the Lord as far as if you want to be a married person, if you want to be married, um, you tell the Lord you want to be married. You want certain attributes that this person should have, love, joy, peace, obedient to God's word, somebody who's going to make your life better and not make it harder. When you look at all those things that you can ask for and just give it to the Lord in prayer, you can focus on all the things you need to focus on that God would have you to do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you focus too much on sex, what's going to happen is you're going to choose the wrong person. You're going to choose the wrong person. Um, there's a scripture that talks about <laughs> in the New Testament, it's better to get married than to burn. <laughs> well, sometimes people have taken that literally, but really what um, <laughs> the apostle was really saying is that some people have the gift to remain single all their lives and have no desire for sex. And then there are others who desire sex, so it's better for them to be married than to burn with sexual desire. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you have to just say yes to just anybody that shows up just to quench that fire. So what you do is you do the practical things. I'll give you some things you could do. Movies that you know will stir up lust and the desire for sex. Stop watching those movies. Um, music. I don't recommend single people listening to romantic music because it does lead that desire for sex. And it gives your mind Im images, imaginations of being with someone. And especially if you've had sex before, then things come back to your mind. Certain songs that you've done before in your past, you know, when you were singing and you're singing, <laughs> those thoughts come to your mind and you remember who you were with. And all those things are just a way to break down your wall, your defenses. So you listen to that all the time, every day. Sure enough, the devil will send temptation. He will send temptation to you. And because you're not built up with God's word and spending that time, that quality time in the mornings um, with the Lord and just practicing that relationship that you have with him, it's very easy to just succumb to everything. You could go on for for months and years celibate, and then you get weak, you get lonely, you start listening to songs, and it brings back memories, and then the devil start convincing you that you're wasting your time, and you know, why why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Everybody's doing it, you know. Nobody's gonna marry me if I just keep waiting and holding out. I am a testament again to tell you that you will meet someone with the same values if you do not compromise your values. I had to flee. I had to flee fornication. When I was dating as a single person, I met men time after time that were like that. You know, they wanted to pressure me for sex. And I said, no, I had to tell them no. You know, I was married before in my past and my marriage now is my second time around. And I had a time of I'm waiting that I had to wait. I had to wait. And I had to learn that God will keep you. God will keep you. You don't, you don't have to give, up, give in to your flesh. You don't have to. And the rewards of being married um, pu the pure way, your mind is not condemned. You feel pure when you're with your spouse. It's satisfying. You're not missing out on anything at all. I'm a witness. Hallelujah. So on to things that um, 
some other things that I know are practical steps that can help you. <laughs> um, please tune into my next video. Um, there's some things I'd like to share with you that will help. God bless you.